Welcome to our very special Christmas show, where as our extraordinary guest, we have the President and the Vice President of the United States of America. Welcome, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. How are you both today? Well, thank you, thank you, Stubber. Oh, we'll give him a red ball in a minute. He'll be fine, you know. <laughs> We're doing okay. I mean, I'm just biding my time. You know, I'd like to be president. You know, but what can I say? Give him a Red Bull. He'll be great. I, you know, I, it's so great to be here. Trampoline and uh, Rolex. It's so wonderful to be on your show. And, you know, and, and with it's Alex, not Rolex. Alex. Alex. Oh, that's great. You know, there I am. Look at those teeth. How much did they cost, huh? Well, are they your own, President Biden? Oh, you betcha. You shave down the old ones and you stick on the new ones and they grow. They get bigger. <laughs> it's they get okay. Older. I can take the but job any time. It's I, okay. I, Mr. President, uh, have you had work done? Have I, are you joking? I can't stay awake. I, <laughs> I can't only stay the president until 5 p.m. And then it's, you know, it's feedy time, you know? Well, honestly, I mean, I'm just looking forward to taking over. Wake up! <laughs> uh, I'm just looking forward to taking over. You know, some people say that I deliver criticism and I'm a bully and, you know, I'm soul-destroying, you know, but really, I mean, it's not that bad. I could be <laughs> pretty Patel, you know. Uh, and tell me, Mr. President, do, do you hear from your predecessor, President Trump, the, the, does he give you friendly advice from Florida? Let me just tell you here something right now. mar lago mar lago Mary lago my mother was a McLeod, Alec. I feel like I'm in my home country, you know? Scotland, Scotland. I'm a haggis, you know? Well, I, welcome, welcome. And I'm delighted and astonished that Melania is, is still with you because we'd heard that after the presidency, after you lost to the election, uh, President Trump, that you that's, might That's an them. aberration. It didn't happen. I'll be the only president in history to come back and win it three times. In 2024 or half past 10, whatever soon as... I hope not. I hope, I'm hoping not. I'm having such a nice time at the moment. Nobody you know, filming me and watching Countdown every afternoon on British television, run-ins of friends every afternoon. I'm having a nice time. I do a little shopping. Please, please don't make me go back to that nasty, nasty White House. And let's take the opportunity to welcome Lewis McLeod and <laughs> Kate Robbins to the Alex <laughs> Salmon Show. Uh, wonderful, wonderful to see in real life because of course last year we did this remotely. Yes. Uh, and uh, because obviously COVID is still with us, but we're all vaccinated and boosted up and all the rest yes. of it. But it's great to ha great to see in it's real life. How here. are you yeah, both? I think we were all a bit nervous about going back live, doing anything live, weren't we? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Although I did get kind of used to being at home. Yeah. I mean, I did, the, the I did, um, I did um, EastEnders in the in the in the pandemic uh, worst phase, where you literally had to be, you know, um, two and a half meters from the actor. So if you, I mean, I wasn't in any love scenes. Damn. But if I was, it, it would have been very awkward because it's very difficult. And so what they do is they put something to represent the person and then they put a sh glass sheet between you if you want to get close. And then remove the sheet. It's, I mean, it's a bit difficult, but I did enjoy EastEnders. But it was, it was, it was hard work. It was hard. It was hard. But, I mean, politics aside, I mean, from your profession as, as uh, comedians and impressionists, I mean, you must uh, be dying for a... A Trump and Melania comeback. I mean, it's, uh, the I mean, only for never the mind impressions. The fate of the planet. I mean, the, the fate of the planet to one side, but you, you, you would love a comeback. I mean, they were a gift of God if for impressionists, but uh, only for that. I mean, who'd want? I mean, we played them. I remember walking through London. Uh, we had a fantastic wig. Yeah, we had this this Alex Rouse, this wig maker, the best. Made as a beautiful, you know, proper wig. With Ronnie Ancona That's right. playing Melania. Melania. I have to say, my Melania is oh, nothing no, compared it's to hers. Gorgeous. She actually looks like her as well. <laughs> That's Amazing. Amazing. about 30 Donald Trumps. Are you the guy that does Donald Trump on that? Yeah, I get that all the time. <laughs> but I did, I did get a moment where, because we had two security guards, we had two big, big lads who were ex servicemen walking with us so you do feel that you're part of that whole juggernaut and yeah. it was the day he was in london so there was a buzz there absolutely it, there's, there's film of them just walking through soho and everyone's going ran up to us with his hand in his pocket like this as if he was going to do something and ronnie didn't notice nobody really noticed but except the the two guys at the back clocked him he'd come up with his hand in his pocket and i'm in character walking along thinking <laughs> what the hell's in his pocket is it a gun and uh, and he just came up and he quickly pulled out his phone and went, 
Can I have an autograph, please? Oh, okay. I mean, that is, photograph, you know, yeah. that's scary. So, but of course, you are in lockdown. You've done Spitting Image and yes, yeah, 100 yeah. Voices. In fact, let's hear some of the ones. Do you do Boris on Spitting Image? No, or? I don't do Boris. But you can do him. Yeah, but, 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 yeah, I, 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 my <laughs> only contribution to the Prime Minister's voice is I came up with the which is utter gibberish. It says a lot about me, I suppose. But uh, I did uh, Michael Gove, uh, where he had testicles for his cheeks. <laughs> we said, <laughs> and we, had, we gave him a kind of uh, a rave persona where he was... Oh, oh, when, he was oh, oh. when he was caught bopping in Aberdeen. We had Elton John, we did El <laughs> Elton John, shut up, David! He was uh, always shouting at David Furnish. I had Gareth Southgate, which was, you know, we had uh, sort of a bit like that, really. Um, <laughs> There's not so many females um, in politics that are imitable at the moment, I don't feel. Oh. I mean, there's Angela Rayner, you know. <laughs> I mean, she's no, she's all right, you know, you've got to shout, scum, you know. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you just go, scum. I mean, but that's all I've got to say about her, really, you know. But there's a pattern developing here, isn't it? I mean, you, you do the vice president who's after the president's job, and oh, you do yes. a Angela Rayner who's clearly after Sir Keir Starmer's well, job. Yeah, well, actually, you know, they talk about MPs having two jobs. My two jobs are one is being the mouthpiece of Jeremy Corbyn, and the other is undermining Keir Starmer. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got two jobs, haven't I? So, so Angela, you'll be after the big job as well. Yeah. So, how, uh, <laughs> how quickly do you think you can snatch the reins from Keir? I think you'd have to sort of like lose a bit of the uh, the sort of you know the long hair and the sort of you know the sort of glam stuff. I think she'd have to become a little bit more plain. <laughs> I think she's very glamorous, isn't she, in a way? But uh, she's glamorous until she says scum, and then she's not very glamorous. <laughs> but I think there should be a spitting image puppet of Shelley Ballas because you know you've got the form. You could go strictly speaking, Lewis. You'd be fantastic. I'd have to smack your body if you didn't get it right. You've got the form. You've got the structure. You've got the composure. I think there should be a puppet of Shirley Ballas, and I'd like to give you one. <laughs> or number 10, even. <laughs> but there's, uh, there's Pretty Patel, of course. She's a, a well-known politician. Yeah. And I mean, a... difficult uh, people to... smuggling, um, people <laughs> talking about bullying, intimidating, and things like that, and that's just me. Uh, no, actually, I haven't mastered her voice. I'll, I'll be honest with you. That sounds great. That sounds that's good to me. Bullying. Like Dominic just... Rab. You know, I was um, I, I, I started uh, impersonating Dominic Raab, and I didn't, you know, I didn't really think I was getting close to it. And what tended to, I started thinking I sounded more like Cliff Richard. And you can't sometimes, you, you know, you create a voice. Well, voice, and, uh, yes, you know. do go between the two. Oh yeah, like um, um, uh, what's his name, Nick Clegg. Yeah. Nick Clegg. When I was doing Nick Clegg's voice, I was getting Boy George. So I was doing Boy George like that, you see. And, um, but if you make the voice less camp, it's, hello, I'm Nick Clegg. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> is he still working for Facebook? You see, well, that's just the problem, isn't it? Because I mean, you'll just get to, to, to master one of the, the, the voices of the politicians, then they'll disappear. I, I mean, do you ever feel like intervening and say, for goodness sake, Nick, stay in <laughs> politics? Yeah, but, but, I don't retire. I need you. Yes. Well, I've been trained to work on my Nicola Sturgeon, and honestly, you know, being on a show like well, this, you've got to understand Nicola I'm surrounded Sturgeon. by Scots, and I have got Scottish in my blood, but I, you know what, but I was trained to do it, and I was, <laughs> but the trouble is, I was saying, like, the only thing, the only way we can get independence is by patient. Patient persuasion. Because people in hospital beds can't even run away when I bang on about a referendum. Patient persuasion. Get the joke. Pa oh, never mind. Patient <laughs> persuasion. I got it. This is the first time I've spoken to Nicola for a while. It just shows you what Christmas can do. <laughs> yeah, and of course, Lewis, uh, uh, on spot, spitting image, obviously, Alex has a has a puppet of you, which you're very yeah. fond of. But, I, but that's not me. I'm, I'm no, kidding. but you don't do that voice, no, do you? No, but there's a haggis that always seems to sort of shadow him. And I thought I'd make the haggis a bit uh, like uh, Alec. Uh, so the haggis sounds <laughs> more like Alex. <laughs> is. And then I got to the centre, no, no, wait, but you need to change the voice slightly because uh, <laughs> the haggis is probably getting a little bit close to, to being an impersonation of Alec. <laughs> so... Oh, my God, that's brilliant. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Uh, I, I, <laughs> no, I, I no. appear, I, we should tell the viewers, uh, in the new spitting image, I appear as Shrek. Yeah. Which Aww. I, 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 I'm, I'm very pleased cool, about that. But Shrek yeah, Shrek, a, Shrek's quite nice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think, you know, given what you could appear as, <laughs> yeah. I'm selling for Shrek. You know? Do you remember but... in the olden days when David Owen and David Steele were around? And they used to have... David Owen used to have David Steele in his pocket on the show, on Spitting Image, not in real life. And he used to have him in his pocket. And I was chatting to David Steele at a do somewhere. And he said, that programme actually ruined my political life completely. 
He said, uh, he said, everybody perceived me to be this tiny little man in the thrall of David Owen and, and, and people's perceptions. I mean, Spitting Image, I think, did change a, quite a lot of people's perceptions. Roy Hattersley has a, a sort of... A, 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 it's, quite a bit of a, it's got a bit of a speech. But didn't he uh, want to sue? Didn't he want to... Let, yeah, let I'm not surprised. To we, had, we had him spraying water every time he spoke. <laughs> That's not nice. I mean, I did put my foot down a few times and refused to do a few impressions. Spitting Image, when, when I first... When I moved to London, it was in its last series, and I was just that bit too late in getting my reel in, and I was gutted. Um, yes, but, you know, I was Kate, doing it then. Kate was um, on the show, and it's, so for me, and we're good mates, and so to be a part of that family is a big deal for me, you know, because it was something that I'd aspired to a long time ago. Um, Do you remember Princess Anne when I met her? I think oh, that's I, just... I think I to, did. I tell you this before. <laughs> no. If I've told you this story before, you can always get rid of it. Princess Anne. I meet her and I'm in a lineup and I don't know what to say. When to, I know she's going to ask me, What do you do? What do you do? She's just very brusque, you know. You know, what do you do? And she's a hard working royal, I'll, I'll give her that. She works harder than most of them. And um, I was standing there and I didn't know whether to say, because I was doing spitting image, you know, and I used to do her voice. And I said, And I just said it, I just said, I'm an impressionist, mum. And she went, mm. Do you have an exhibition on anywhere? Anywhere I can see the painting? <laughs> <laughs> I felt really stupid. And then later on when somebody said to her, oh, ma'am, she, she does your voice on that, you know, that puppet show that, uh, that your mother isn't keen on. And uh, she sort of said, um, they didn't say your mother isn't keen on, of course. And she just said, oh, yes, you can't do me. Your nose isn't big enough. Because she's got quite a long, long line nose. But at least she's got a sense of humour. Indeed. So, yeah. I played yeah. Charles on the new one and Andrew. And uh, I met Charles in t uh, 2015, and it was for combat stress. We, we did a wee thing for them. And uh, I've never been so nervous in all my life. And of course, you have to go to St. James, you have to go to his house, you know, and so you've got this beautiful staircase, and then you get taken along, and you're very much in a in realization that you're in a palace here, this is a special place. So you go downstairs, and, and we were in what looked like a horseshoe, a group of eight. And the, if you were to look on it from a z z you know, drone, you'd see the shape of it like a horseshoe, really. And we were all sort of sitting, waiting, and uh, he comes over and uh, this lady introduces, and says, Lewis is the voice of Postman Pat. And he turns and he goes, so you're the voice of Postman Pat. What does he sound like? <laughs> 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 My brain had just shut down. And I went, Unusual. hello, Mrs Goggins. <laughs> well, he does this, he goes, ha, puts his hand over his nose and makes this ridiculous, ha, sound. Which we got a lovely picture of him going like that. Is this Postman Pat or Prince Charles? Prince I, I, so basically, he, you know, he says, well, Postman Pat, what does he sound like? And I went, yeah, and Hello, he's Mrs. In the voice of Postman Pat, Hello, Mrs. Goggins. Which I've just called the future king, Mrs. Goggins, and I, I suddenly I was like, Oh, no. I was more worried because, you know, when they do that thing when you meet a royal, it's uh, well, Your Royal Highness, it's great to meet you. My uncle Harry, years ago, when my. Sorry to drop names, but my cousin is Paul McCartney, and right, when the Beatles, the Beatles had the Hard Day's Night premiere, mm. and they're all like, all the Beatles are lined up. My uncle Harry's trying to make his way to the bar. He punches <laughs> into, punches into Princess Margaret and goes, "Oh, sorry, Queen." Sorry, what? Queen. Because <laughs> in Liverpool, everyone's called Queen, you know, or Hen. You're like, "Sorry, Queen." <laughs> Lady Kate and Sir Lewis go nowhere because coming up after the break, we're going to continue our discussions with these amazing, amazing people and. Look at the biggest political event of the year, or was it really COP26 in Glasgow? We'll see you then. Welcome back to our Christmas show where Lewis McLeod and Kate Robbins are helping us with some of the great political events of the year. And we move on to COP26, which is, of course, Lewis in our home city of Glasgow. Well, yes. Glasgow's not really my home city, Edinburgh, but. I married her. Well, that's married they all stayed. Well, they all went through to Edinburgh, didn't they? <laughs> well, yeah, they got all these American presenters going, and here we are from Glasgow, Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, what's wrong with Glasgow? Why can't they stay in Glasgow? It was brilliant for anybody that lived in Glasgow. It was CNN that got it wrong. That's wasn't right, it? Wolf. Was it Wolf? Uh, especially if you had a flat to rent out. Well, of course. It was a grill. You made a fortune. <laughs> it was terrific. Lansfield Quay, which was near where the SECC was. 
uh, was doing a roaring trade, apparently, and it was, you were reading stories. In fact, the press picked up on it, didn't they? The papers were saying things like, you know, 30 grand for nine days. I mean, that must have been amazing but, but for anybody with a flat. I mean, after all these years of the Edinburgh Festival and all these folk in Edinburgh making a fortune by renting out their flats, finally, <laughs> Glasgow gets its <laughs> turn. Glasgow gets a kick of the ball. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was amazing. And uh, by all accounts, a huge success. It was, but uh, of course, what, huge, huge queues of people outside to hear your good self. I think I had an opening speech. Did you not, David Attenborough, one of your best? Well, thank you so much, Tasmina. That's a wonderful thing. But the world is falling apart. The universe collapses quicker than a monologue from Brian Cox. And let's be honest, this is a crisis that's unfolding like <laughs> Jupiter's um, gas giant expansion. Now, what's happening is, of course, weather and climate are two different things. You see, weather is the day-to-day -day fluctuations of temperature, and climate is something your fitness instructor shouts at you at the bottom of a rope. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd do an accent, so you're like climbing a rope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Your yeah, Attenborough. It's, it's a bit of work. Your but, Attenborough is the best. Oh, no, 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 that's, he's 95, and it's... It's how, wouldn't you just want that if you're spared to 95, oh, to be able to yeah. open your mouth and yeah. everybody just going, hanging on every word you say, the guy well, is well, incredible. Had, I mean, you know? he must have been the, the oldest uh, person at, uh, at COP26. And of course, the youngest, or one of the youngest, is probably Greta, oh, Greta Thunberg. Yes. Well, okay. I have a speech from Greta. Um, oh. I've got it prepared here. It's just a serious speech here. It's a blah, 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 blah speech, Kate. I'm trying to do Greta's face. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, I've been carelessly campaigning, trying to get the world to take notice. People don't want to be told how terrible it is. <laughs> how if we don't act now, it'll keep happening again and again. And just how jarring those melodies are. <laughs> I'm talking about ABBA reforming. ABBA, the worst thing ever to come out of Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Worse than IKEA's vegan meatballs. <laughs> My mum likes them. Her taste in music is terrible. She thinks Stormzy is a nickname for the weatherman, Michael Fish. <laughs> Climate change and ABBA are both linked to an increased risk of wildfires. At least they will be once I've burned down Anna Fried and Agnetha's houses over and out. Oh, well, I mean, that's, that's a wonderful pitch. And I know, Kate, you were thinking about... I love her, to do actually. Because, well, I think she's, she's great, she's, actually. She's, she's, and she, oh, she's older, older now, of course. Well, um, also, she got naturalised in Glasgow. I mean, you know, she's in Glasgow yeah. for five minutes and she's chanting, yeah, you can stick your, the you can stick oh, your oh. climate change well, up your mahookie. That was unfortunate. She got somebody, they all got her uh, chanting something, didn't they? Uh, have you got you a can, clip of that? You can stuff your climate crisis somewhere. He's just having a bit of fun. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't know what you're up your I think what she was they were trying to get her to sing was you can't shove your granny off a bus. Oh, and you can't shove yes. a jelly yeah. piece out a multi-story flat. I mean, it's the same sort of... Yeah. You can't shove your granny off the bus was the stock tune, was it not, when you went on your summer... Yeah. When the school, when we used to do That's stuff right, like yeah. that, we went yeah. to school yeah. picnics and all the rest of it. I must admit... I think, I mean, I think she's absolutely brilliant, what she's doing, you know, and a lot of kids look up to her so much. But I only feel that I could do that, taking the mickey out of her, now she's an adult. Because when she was 15, 16, I didn't think it was appropriate. I thought it was a bit mean. So now she's an adult, we'll have a right go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we should, for the benefit of our international audience, make it clear that Glaswegians do not fling their grandmothers off omnibuses. <laughs> And what, I mean, I, I, that's a Billy Connolly routine where it was on a bus and that wee person <laughs> came on. And it was an elderly lady and she flew off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Down the street, jobbity week, bumpity bump. <laughs> well, there are lots of, of course, lots of uh, politicians at, at COP26, some which you do so well, like, well, Angela Merkel, for instance, Kate, she's, uh, that's her now, she's, she's out. Nobody can do Angela Merkel because you only ever hear a translator talking. Ah. So people... So that's not her, then? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you hear her speaking in German, which I can't do, mm. so we don't really know what her voice sounds like, because all you hear is somebody saying blah, blah, blah in a translation. But we know she means business. Ooh, well, judging from that mean... photograph, I mean... Well, the geez, Beatles oh. jacket. She wears those Beatles jackets, doesn't she? She definitely Did means you business. Did she know a smile? I mean, come oh, on. Oh, I know. It's an unfortunate Sleep. photograph, isn't it? Thank heavens COP26 was spared Donald Trump, but of course Sleepy Joe was there and falling asleep 
Well, you know, I, the first thing that hit me was a naked Scotsman. I had no idea John <laughs> Barrowman was even filming it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find it terribly boring, President Biden? No, I don't have the same affinity for, for the Highland Heather and the Hoochter Puchties that the Donald has, you know. It was a long flight. And poor Kamala. Kamala, you weren't even there. I will know. Well, you know, I want just biding my time, as I say. I'm there he is. biding my Did time. You mean that? I'm a Jedi. Walking? I was meditating. What do you want from me? Oh, you know, I was going to levitate any second. He's thinking. But the woman next to him looks like she's about to sleep. just broken wind. I don't know what to oh, do. That it stinks. That's that somebody just, somebody just woke him up. Mr. President, you need, to, you need to really get this together. Are you okay? Let's get me some more tramadol. I'll be fine. Never mind Kamala, of course. Kate. What about Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall in her encounter with Joe Biden? It was frightful. I mean, it was, yes, he was farting. I was talking oh. to him, and they went on for about 20 seconds. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, terrible. I mean, it just went on for ages. As my mother said, as you cannot hold was not in your hand. But, but uh, President, did they not tell you how to behave in, in front of royalty? I'm 78. You've got, you know, they, they get better and stronger. <laughs> They're like blockbuster movies when Poor. you get my age and you break wind. Poor How's Camilla. this one? <laughs> There's tomatoes and sprouts and everything on the end of this one. <laughs> Poor Camilla. I'd love to just, I mean, you know, not a fly in a wall about it, but, you know, just to witness that one. That just was so embarrassing. I mean, you know, if somebody's got a flatulence <laughs> problem, um, but the fact that she was telling everyone about it, yeah, apparently she said it went off 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, one of those things she never talks about. Well, you it. just well, don't well, mention it. Well, well can, can, I, can I just say that I, I, I've been in politics, public life for 35 years, and this is the first time yeah. I've ever spoken about breaking wind. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We've lowered the tone. OK, well, Alex. Let's, uh, let's keep the tone at that base level, then, and talk about Boris Johnson at COP26. Do you think he was a success? I th us? Well, I think, of course, my, my concern, Pwah, this is, of course, Boris, the, the nightmare before Christmas. Uh, <laughs> uh, or as, as I like to call is, it, there the is, forthcoming the Omicron daily briefings with... Uh, Witty Pretty Quarteng, which is the sequel to Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at him. Wow, what's he doing with his hand? There you go. Well, I mean, we had an outbreak of uh, Omicron in the 80s, uh, but the other Transformer, Optimus Prime, <laughs> dealt with it with flair and aplomb. And, of course, I, I think that the whole thing about uh, COP26, it was sort of sidelined, really, with the whole fishing uh, France, with the, the, the kind of schism well, the Macron between issue, Macron, you know, yes, sorry, bounding right. in and doing all the that stuff. The whole thing for yeah, me, it just made me put my little oar in. The whole thing was just so hypocritical. And they're all there creating all these carbon emissions in their planes and their modes of transport. What a load of... Ugh, it's annoying. I mean, they should have all got there by boat. Can you actually make fun of the pandemic? But Alex, oh, sorry, I was going to say, couldn't they have done the COP26 on a massive Zoom? They didn't all have to get together, did they? Very true, very true, they could have. Can you make fun of the pandemic? Of course you can. You're not making fun of people losing their lives, but you're making fun of the way we have to behave in a pandemic, aren't you? And yeah, for us all to group together as a nation and go, as a world, and go, right, we're getting this vaccine, we're, we're, we finally agree that it's OK, to then be told we need another one. And another one, I think, is also... Well, much of the world's still waiting for the first one, of the course, one, which of is course, the Alex. Well, yeah, that's yeah. the, that's the, the terrible it's, it's, thing, that Africa just didn't get enough, no, and then no. now we've got Omicron. Uh, you know, that's... I think people are losing confidence in the... I hated that word, efficacy, you know. The efficacy. Mm. Uh, and, and, and the repetition, was it, was it M, your beautiful daughter, doing that routine about the delivery guys turning up, where they take pictures of the, oh, no. the memories of lockdown? One of oh, no, so Emily, me so my that. daughter, Emily Atak, yeah. she's quite famous and the paps follower here, there and everywhere. You know, and I'm, when I stay at her house, I make sure when I put the milk bottles out, I've got my full makeup on. Like, <laughs> like but she said, um, oh, no, I can't believe it. She said, oh, just take my picture. I just went to the door then. And I said, are you sure? And it wasn't, it was Deliveroo who putting a pizza oh. down, taking a picture of it, you know, to show where it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she thought the flash cameras were the paparazzi. <laughs> that's a pandemic gag for me, you know, that, that yeah. to me feels like yeah. that's the many experiences of, a, of the pandemic. 
can be laughed about. You have to, because otherwise it's just going to be really awful. It is. And, <laughs> and let's uh, not talk about it, because it's almost yeah. Christmas, of course. Yeah, just, yeah, we're yeah, just yeah. a couple of days away. There'll be no pizza, there'll be turkey and all the rest of it. Yeah. Have you got your Christmas shopping in? Did you manage to well, grab the turkeys and everything in time? Gas and electricity bills are going through the roof, but uh, they're going to be higher than Michael Gove at a rave and Hammersmith. But nevertheless... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, still, you can still cook a, a turkey by candlelight if you start now. So you're both, you're both at home for Christmas, yeah? Yes, I have yes. started uh, and Christmas shopping. Who would shopping be yet. your ideal Christmas guest? I mean, who would you like most to invite for Christmas? Oh, I th from the, do you mean people who are no longer with us? From uh, history, from who, history. So you can have the, the world's your oyster. I think Queen Elizabeth I would be quite good. She had no teeth. She had them all removed, didn't she? Yeah. Should be like banging on about, you know, let, let's 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 sort out religion. No, should be great. I'd like Queen Elizabeth the first with no teeth. I, I once had an, an, an exchange with Glenda Jackson uh, in political exchange when she was a, a Labour minister, and I accused her of, of being in character as, as Elizabeth the first. <laughs> she didn't, didn't take too kindly. <laughs> she wasn't pleased. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not surprised. I, I almost ended up in the tower. <clears throat> I bet. Again. And, uh, Lewis, who, who is your... Uh, sorry, Kay, who, who is your favourite? Your, your Christmas guest, your... If you could, could invite... Darth in. Vader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody, uh, yeah, some sort of uh, villain from a movie, I think, would be quite good, you know. Um, I don't know. I, um, oh, geez, uh, cause, uh, Oh, there's so many you could choose from if it was a politician. Uh, It'd be like Monty Pye for the well, death yeah, coming Graham to the Chandler, door. something like that, yeah. Or... or um, Peter Sellers, maybe. Oh, he'd somebody. Be good fun. Dom he'd be Deloise, good. Mel Brooks. Yeah. Somebody funny. Someone funny. You know? Well, it's, it is almost Christmas, and we've we bought you both a, a couple of presents. So, small. yes, Ooh. some gifts what? for you. Very, very that we're going small, to make you yeah. open oh. uh, in front of us. And so, oh, Lewis, this is for oh, wow. you. Thank you very much. You're most welcome, oh, Kate, thank for you. you. Thank you. I put an L on it, so I knew. Can we open them now? Yes, open them now. So we can all see. Where's ours? Yeah, well, we you know, you're it's terrible now. That's fine, Lewis. Oh, this is good. Oh, there's more than one. Yeah, I know. Oh, wow. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that is actually gorgeous. Thank you. You see, we did some research. Yeah, we did research, Kate, particularly because of your surname, Kate Robbins. Because you're actually a McGregor. Like Rob oh, Roy McGregor. I'm a McGregor. You're a McGregor? Yes. Oh, wow. That's it's strange enough, you're a McLeod. This is the dress, McLeod. That's the one. Looking great. Thank you very much, MC Loud. <laughs> it's loud. Uh, put, put, put them on. <laughs> Let's have a look. I like the McGregor turn. I think that's fantastic. Ah, the red streak. Your great ancestor, Rob Rock. Let's <laughs> 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 get yours on. Well, you know that his mother's uh, there. You go. She's a McLeod. There you are. That's what it looks well, like, folks. I'm a McGregor. Well, Kate and Lewis, enjoy your scarves and enjoy Christmas. I hope you have a, a wonderful time. And of course, to all of our viewers, small of us, until we see them in the new year, Kate and Lewis are going to stay with us. Have a wonderful Christmas. Christmas. Christmas! And God bless us, everyone. <laughs>